Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one, Mia Culpa, written by Alt Cipher. First off, I would like to extend my sincere thanks and humble gratitude to the Chancellor, the Legislator, and the 10,000 Worlds for allowing me this opportunity and for being such gracious hosts during these trying times. To the Delakia, let me apologize for the destruction of your sector. It honestly never occurred to us that a species would send out all of the breeding age males for battle. It seemed too fantastic to believe. We see now what we should have seen then. We did not mean to start a genocide, and for that, we apologize. To the Bacalic, let me apologize for ravaging your two farm world colonies. We were looking for cloning information to help the Delekia and putting a biological research outpost on your main source of all your staple crops was not a scenario we imagined. Nor did we imagine the lethal plagues you stored in there would be so easily transmitted across your world. We did not mean to create a famine that would wipe out two-thirds of your population. For all that, we apologize. To the Pacata, we let me apologize for the utter desolation of your military research facilities. We had heard your expertise in field rations would help the famine of Balakalak. We did not realize that your military was so intertwined with your religion that by visiting the planet you would be forced to sterilize it. We did not mean to leave you defenseless in the face of your enemies, and for that, we apologize. To the Kask, let me apologize for the race riots we started on your homeworld. After your attacks on Pekata, we felt obliged to aid them. We did not realize that your world was so strongly fractured, and that by negotiating with one side, it tipped the balance of power on your homeworld. We did not mean to instigate the complete and total collapse of your society, and for that, we apologize. For the Wanug, let me apologize for the plagues. We had heard that you were the best diplomats in the galaxy, and could help negotiate peace talks for Kask. We thought that we had decontaminated thoroughly after the trouble in Bekalek. We did not realize that those close genetic similarities between your people and the Bekalek food crops. We did not mean to bring such a pestilence upon you, and for that, we apologize. To the Elex, let me apologize for the incident of your station of Rekian Expanse. We did not know that you were sentient grains and thought your station was an unattended warehouse. We only raided the station to help alleviate with the Balakak and possibly give them insight into the issues with the Wanug. We did not mean to cause such a pain and suffering upon you or eat so many of you, and for that, we apologize. To the Galactic Peacekeeper Corps, let me apologize for incinerating so many of your ships and your people. We did not have any translator capable of speaking what you called elemental and so did not understand that you were duly deputized peace officers. When you gave chase after we raided the Elax facility, we mistook you for pirates. As we felt we were more on a humanitarian mission, we felt justified in resorting to lethal force when their ships attempted to delay us. We did not mean to take so many lives and cause so much destruction, and for that, we apologize. To the Lekera, let me apologize for destroying your spawning grounds with your sacred Mectalka. We had never seen a space-based organism before that incident and also did not realize their endangered status. When we ran out of full throttle through the breeding areas to escape the galactic peacekeepers, we did not realize this would disturb the fragile ecology of the asteroid field, nor that a generation of Mectalka pods would be rendered sterile. We did not mean to cause such a devastation on an innocent life form, which you hold holy and that we apologize. To the Rishkaka, let me apologize for dishonoring so many hundreds of thousands of you people. We are opposed to slavery. We do not realize that your culture dictates a time of servitude as a means of gaining empathy and understanding of other species. We did not intend to ruin so many of your people's lives in our struggle for freedom, and for that we apologize. To the Valadoria, let me apologize for flattening your major continent. When rescuing the Rishaka above your world, an errant shot hit your surface. The relativistic cannon had been damaged in the battle, and all readings appeared to show it properly aimed at the opposing ships. 
The safety protocols should have been limited to firing. We did not mean to devastate your world, your people, and your economy. And for that, we apologize. Finally, we'd like to issue a blanket apology to the multitude of worlds whose destruction and harm was less severe than those I've listed here. While your pain is no less valid or important than the named worlds, I simply do not have the time to enumerate the remaining issues and incidents. I offer our most sincere and heartfelt apologies to you all. The Earth stands ready to help rebuild and repair wherever we can. Be the most help. Thank you. End of story number one. Story number two. What the Hive Cannot Understand Written by G.W. Brooks It's been told that there is evidence your translators don't capture the fullness of our language and we are incapable of fully understanding yours, so I will be brief. Looking down from your gleaming ships, I have no doubt we appear backwards and weak. After all, we have barely managed to send small numbers of our people to the moon, and it took only a single airburst to determine even if our most fearsome nuclear weapons were no match for your technology. We probably look unorganized as well, with countless nations, endless rulers, and complete lack of network telepathy, our scientists say that you are born with. In fact, I understand that when you first made contact, there was confusion amongst your kind about which of our leaders was in command. The truth is, it's somewhere between all of them and none of them. And of course, the strongest of our kind are no match for your youngest hivelings, we lack exoskeletons, and one of our senior translators said he was overheard your military people talking about actually dialing back the strength of your weapons. Hey, first, we both know these things, you and I. I state them merely so that we can agree on the broad issues before negotiating. Because we are negotiating. You came here expecting surrender. I came here with an offer. Because today... The very moment, in fact, you will decide the fate of your kind for all generations. You can leave us peacefully. Perhaps we are not yet ready for the stars, and that might be wise. You can trade with us, for we are great traders and explorers. We already know from our encounters that humans have a broader climate range and greater native flexibility than your kind. Surely we can work together. Or you can fight us. If you choose this, it'll be the complete and irrevocable end of your kind. As I said, we look backwards and weak, but the bellies and bloodlust honed by one million years. We war with each other constantly, tear down entire civilizations, and burn them to the ash over the smallest political matters. When was the last time you turned one of your mandibles against a brother? I also said that we look unorganized, and indeed, we are. But look at a few battles that you fought with us. More than ten centuries of political and ethnic strife vanished in an instant you, a Zeno, set foot on Earth. Once, years ago, we split the atom, not sure if it would blow up the whole damn planet. You think we won't take our chances with you? And finally, I said that you were stronger than us. And you are. But your voice is the thrum of a hive. Ten million nattering, buzzing zati, all deciding what's best. You know how to kill, but you kill because your hive has given you a command, not out of your own passion. And that, Zeno, is why you fail. Your culture has no room for a rogue bastard who's willing to do anything, kill anything, for as long as it takes, just to make a point. We are weak but we've got a million years of murderous, bloody, irrational point-making running through our veins. I'm told that your race respects only strength, and so I've come here to show you our resolve. I, we, come to you as others, as partners or as enemies. You won't be able to choose which, but that choice came after you. The ones who, even now, are hearing the transmission of the Zati Prime can decide. You have honored me with this audience. I hope you, you will find honor in your death. And humanity's united ultimatum. Personal voice log. Hoi Bak Chu, Secretary General of the United Nations and designated messenger to the Zati command ship. Following this, the transmission was lost and the Zati command ship exploded internally. 
Computer analysis from Earth revealed that a small nuclear explosion occurred deep inside the ship. Unprotected by its exterior shields, the ship's drive went critical and the entire vessel was destroyed. To date, no individual or government has stepped forward to take credit for the bomb Secretary Buck Chu carried on his body. End of story number two. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider supporting the author from the link down below. Otherwise, if you wish to support this channel, there are numerous ways to do so, like liking, subscribing, and possibly even becoming a patron. Otherwise, the easiest way would be to share. And until the next video, I hope that you all have a good one, and I'll see you then. Cheers.